there! This video is part of a series provided by the American Indian Language Development Institute, ALDI, in collaboration with NAMA, the Master of Arts in Native American Languages and Linguistics, at the University of Arizona. Today, I'll be showing you how to modify your keyboard. This tutorial can be used with Mac OS Sierra or version 10.12 or any later versions. Before doing anything, it is absolutely essential that you back up your computer and all files, preferably using macOS's time machine function. To begin, I'll demonstrate the regular functioning of the diacritic or symbol system on the macOS keyboard. I'll be opening and using text edit here for convenience's sake. Normally, pressing a key and holding it allows you to display a number of different diacritical symbols or alternate characters on the keyboard. However, for symbols like B, these diacritics are simply not available. Go ahead and test this out for yourself with symbols like C and D. You might already be pretty familiar with this, but you can see here that C, E, and A all have diacritical symbols, whereas B and D do not. These technical shortcomings pose a challenge to both language use and language work, so I'll try to address that here. First, we're going to need to restart the computer, so if you intend to follow along closely, you'll want to watch this video on a separate device. So go ahead and navigate to the Apple symbol in the menu bar and click Restart. As soon as you've done this, you'll want to hold the Command and R keys on your keyboard during the entire recovery or reboot sequence so that it can enter the recovery mode. This may take a minute. Once here in recovery mode, you'll access Utilities to open a terminal. Yours should look similar, but don't be alarmed if it looks a bit different. It should look something like this. Now you'll want to type CSRUTIL space status to check the status of your system integrity protection on your Mac device. Press Enter. This should give you the status, and if you're following this tutorial, it should be enabled. Next, you'll type in the same command, but instead of status, you'll type disable. Press enter and this should successfully disable the system integrity protection. Now we'll need to restart the machine. Navigate again to the menu bar and click restart. Once you've successfully navigated back to your desktop, open a finder window. We'll be using it to navigate to the folder containing the keyboard system files. Now we'll press Command, Shift, and G at the same time in the Finder window to open this navigation option. You'll type in this location exactly as above. I'll read it aloud as you do so. Slash system slash library slash input space methods slash press and hold period app, A-P-P, -P, all one word. Then press enter, and you should be navigated to this folder here. You should see this file labeled press and hold. Use a control click, or a right click if you're on a mouse, to select the file and select show package contents. Here there should only be one folder, through which we'll quickly navigate, and then through plugins. We should arrive at another single file, which will control click or right click again and select show package contents. Since there's only one folder therein, go ahead and double click and navigate through it, then selecting resources. We should arrive to a folder full of keyboard files. I'll switch the view here for convenience's sake, and you may choose to do so as well. Since there's a number of files, I'll be displaying them as a list rather than as icons. Our third step will be to identify, select, and copy the right file. We're looking for keyboard-en.plist with nothing else in the file name. Simply dash en. This is the English keyboard file that we're looking for. You'll want to control or right click and then select the duplicate option. We're doing this to ensure that there's a clean, untampered, unedited copy available in this folder should anything go awry. Our next step will be to take the same file and drag it from the Finder window onto your desktop. There's no need to worry as since this is a system file, a copy will be created onto your desktop and the original file will not be moved or displaced. So no worries. Now, if you followed these steps carefully, there should be nothing to worry about. 
However, it's important to act with a healthy sense of caution since we're messing with system files and have turned the system integrity protection off. Leave that finder window to the side for now and open that new file that's been copied to your desktop. You can use text editor or another similar simple TXT editor to open it. I'll make both the window and the text bigger for ease of editing and I suggest you do the same. Drag the corners to expand and then pinch and zoom or use command and plus to expand the text size. Take a look through and you should see a number of different lines describing keys and the diacritics or symbols that can be accessed with them. You'll notice as we observed prior that there are certain keys missing. There's an entry for C and an entry for E, but no entry for D. You'll also notice that there appear to be repeat entries, as there are separate entries for both capital letters and lowercase letters, with the file containing capital entries first, and then starting over at A, once it reaches Z in the uppercase, beginning again in the lowercase entry. Next, we'll carefully edit entries to either add new keys available or add new diacritics to existing keys. First, I'll demonstrate adding new symbols or diacritical marks to existing keys and key entries. I've navigated to the Roman accent entry for the lowercase c. See that besides the regular lowercase letter c, there's three additional symbols available for selection from the accent menu here as entries in the file. I've arbitrarily selected a symbol for insertion here into this entry, a C with an underdot, which I'll copy-paste. However, realistically, any symbol can be used and the selection is arbitrary. The only restriction is that the same symbol is placed both under the keycap sequence and the string sequence. You'll see both these sequences must match since it maps the symbol to the accent menu. Once finished, if this file is inserted back into system files, it will allow you the option to select that key from holding and pressing C on your keyboard. Earlier, we noticed that not all entries and not all keys can be used to produce accents, since there are entries missing. Here, we have C and E, but no D available. However, we can create an entry in the file to allow the accent menu to become accessible and key mappings to be placed so that diacritics can be selected from the accent menu. You'll see here that each entry begins with a key name followed by a dictionary and an end dictionary bit. What I'll do here is I'll paste the entry immediately above, creating a space, and then promptly paste it into that space that I've created. Remember to grab all of the entry, including the part that has the key and name. Here, you'll see I forgot to copy the space right before the left caret at the start of the entry, and so my spacing ends up a little bit odd, but that can be easily fixed with spaces as long as each line is on its own line as the original. If you encounter any difficulties or any errors, don't be afraid to close the file without saving and open it again to begin anew. What I'll do now is simply change all the information to fit the new key already available on my keyboard. Note that what I show you here can change the accent menu and the characters accessible in each key's accent menu, but it does not change your keyboard's character mapping. By holding and pressing keys, we'll change the name in between key and key from Roman-accent-c to Roman-accent-d. We don't need to change the direction, but the sequences under keycaps and strings can be replaced with the same symbol in the name Roman accent. It's important for the sequences under keycaps and strings to match for it to display properly. Having done this, we've enabled the accent menu for the lowercase d key on the keyboard, although it won't display anything since we have nothing here. Now we can simply add whatever symbol we might need exactly as shown in step 5a before. While we don't want any spaces at the beginning or the end of the sequence, as you can see from other entries, it's important that there is one space and exactly one space in between each symbol in the sequence. Q 
Keep in mind, just as there are different entries for different keys, there are also different entries for lowercase and uppercase keys. So this process needs to be repeated for the uppercase keys with their symbols, whatever they might be. They can be the same as the lowercase, but merely be the uppercase alternatives, or you can choose completely new symbols to place under C. Here, I'll demonstrate the step again, placing capital C with an under dot. After having finished creating any new entries and placing any symbols in the file, make sure to save it by selecting File, Save, or pressing Command S. We can then close the text file. When you're finally satisfied with the file and it contains all the symbols or entries that you need, we'll need to replace the original file. Bring up that Finder window that you had previously set aside or repeat Step 2 to re-navigate to the original folder. A second window is not strictly needed as you may simply have the edited file already easily accessible from the desktop. I'll repeat Step 2 again here to navigate to the folder while keeping the location of the edited file in the left finder window. Feel free to follow along, pausing as necessary. Now that I've arrived at the right folder and location, I'll go through and I'll identify the copy that I made earlier before I move my new edited file. Since multiple copies may be made and the original file can be lost, I suggest renaming it with something such as ORIGINAL in all caps, but leaving it in this location should you need it. Now we'll simply click and drag and drop our new file into the original folder where it will replace the original file. It'll ask for authentication and then give you three options. You'll need to select the replace option and then provide your account username and password as necessary. Once this is complete, you should have new symbols available in the Accent Menu options. Go ahead and test them using any text editor or word processor. Here, you can see the additional characters that I added to my Accent Menu. C with an under dot lowercase, uppercase, and a D-like symbol. Having done this, the final step is to re-enable the System Integrity Protection, or SIP, to do this, we'll need to restart the computer, keeping Command and R held the entire time the computer restarts to enter recovery mode. Once in recovery mode, we'll go back under Utilities, access from the menu bar, and select Terminal. Like last time, we'll type CSRUTIL, followed by a space, but this time we'll type enable, then press enter. Terminal will provide confirmation that the system integrity protection was reactivated successfully, and then restart your computer as normal. Logging back in and navigating to the desktop, you should be able to use your computer as normal.